Let me ask you, audience here, do you follow Jesus or do you follow Paul? Jesus Christ preached the oneness of God, that he was a servant of God, that he could do nothing without God, that he was completely relying upon God, and you make and listen to the quote of the Apostle Paul. I don't want to quote Paul. Because Jesus Christ said and deal with those passages. Jesus Christ knew about Paul. About that he would come. Remember, he's a prophet of God. He can prophesy. He said, I fear that man will worship me following for the doctrines and teachings of men. Who was Paul? A self-proclaimed apostle. I fear that man will worship me if he did not care that Thomas worshipped him, that other people worshipped him, why did he say he feared it in that verse? You see, Jesus Christ did not say, interestingly enough, as the good servant of God and the Messiah, he did not say, I fear that man will worship me following for the teachings of the prophets. Why? Because the prophets of God taught the oneness of God. That God is merciful, loving, and forgiving. Your Bible states, it says, I shall not hold, respons I shall not hold res the, the Father responsible for the sins of the Son, nor the Son responsible for the sins of the Father. Let the wickedness of the wicked be on the uh, wicked, and the righteousness of the righteous be on the righteous. God is ultimately fair. You pay your ticket in life by what you do. You see... I would not kill my unborn daughter in the womb of my wife for the sins of my 15-year-old son. And neither would God. God says in the Bible, supposedly in the Bible, it says Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, God is not a man that, she, that, he, that he should or the son of man. Uh, that's in uh, Numbers. I copied this wrong. Um, here they go. In Hosea, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. And also the glory of Israel will I not lie or have regret. For he is not a man that he should have regret. Hosea 11, 9. I will execute my burning anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, my firstborn, Israel. For I am God. And not a man. For I am God. And not a man. The holy is in your midst. And I will not come in your in wrath. God is constantly with you. God never left you. God is omniscient. And knows everything that his creation is going to do. He is omnipresent with you. He does not have to become a man to die. To stay with you for three days. Or three years and then leave. God is with you constantly, right here, he's right next to you. Uh, the verse is about 1-1, uh, one, one, John 1-1, one, one, that was taken by a man by the name of Philo Judeus, who was half Greek, half, half Greek, half Jew, who studied philosophy, I forgot, under Plato or Aristotle. That was taken from a term that he came up, and it's very funny how most Christian apologists understand the Greek, and they become scholars in Greek philosophy to explain the religion of Christianity. Why would you need philosophy in Greek philosophy to exp uh, in a philosophy that is multi-God worship, polytheist, to explain your religion in Christianity? Why? Why do you require as a philosophy major to take Greek philosophy to explain a religion that talks about the oneness of God? Why? The word logos means word or command. Of an example of that is decalogue. The word deca means ten log commandments. Jesus was the Word. Yes, He was. In Islam, it says that He was the Word. But the Word was to be. For God created the moon, He said to be. The sun to be. The stars to be. Man to be. Woman to be. People be. Life be. And Jesus was an extension of the Word to be. And that extension comes in four ways. I, have, I hope they, I have the time. Number one, four ways of God's creation. Number one, we were made through the, through the term of a man and a woman. We came to life. Number two, second way of God's creation was that God created Adam without the intervention of a woman or a man, but by the hand of God, God created Adam. His second way of creation. Number three, 
Hawa, Eve. In Arabic, the word Hawa means made out of life. The rib of Adam, the third way of creation. And the fourth way was Jesus Christ, who was born by the command of God, Kun Fayakun, and he came from the womb of a woman. The four ways of God's ability to create. This is called God, when Jesus Christ is called the Word, that's what the Word is to be. To be. Jesus never claimed to be God. That verse, in fact, wasn't original to the Bible. It was added on. Another example of why my good friend here has to quote Greek uh, words and why many apologists use and become Greek masters of Greek and, and, and Greek mythology and philosophy to try to explain from a polytheistic religion, from a polytheistic standpoint, how they came to believe in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost when Jesus Christ was a worshiper of the one God and never spoke to him. Never spoke to him. We call you to Islam to establish the oneness of God in the way that Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, Lot, and Jonah did, where they submitted their lives to the will of God and knew that that God is a merciful and loving God. For he who creates naturally within him is the art and the want to love and to forgive. Even a person that makes a piece of artwork loves the artwork he makes. A man who writes a book or poetry loves the poetry he makes because he created it. And so much is the love with God when he created all of us. His love for us never stopped. His creation for us never stopped. His grace for us never left us. This is God the creator who Jesus Christ lived his life worship. Now, other points that he made, I was trying to get them uh, about, I, I addressed that about John. Um, I forget the verse, not that long, but I, I forget what, what he was talking about because I'm, but again, uh, Jesus never proclaimed that he was God, never once. He showed and went out of his way to show you his reliance in God and the love. He said, my meat is to serve God. What gives me what sustenance and gives me strength and what gives me joy is to serve the God that made me. And he always talks about God and God first. And when he comes back as the Messiah, it will come back to establish the oneness of God, that man will be in eternal peace, Islam, peace in submission to the will of God. This is what it says within the Bible. At no point, I tell you, my Christian friend, get to know, who read the Bible, look at it, look at those verses that claim that you claim that Jesus is God, like Lazarus and the other verses that he quoted, and look how many times Jesus says God and separates himself. You see, Jesus Christ said, again, you must separate. I fear that man will worship me following for the doctrines and teachings of men. Jesus Christ said, Mary, I have not ascended to my Father, nor your Father, my God, and your God. I must very, very quick. If Jesus wanted to proclaim that he was God, at the moment when he defeated death, he would have said, go tell my disciples that I am the Lord thy God. But he acted as a Muslim, and in a moment where he could have said, I am God, he proclaimed God. He said, Thou art God, and tell my disciples that I have not ascended to the one you call God and the one that I call God. Show me and tell me where now Jesus has proclaimed himself God in that statement. Thank you very much. Okay, Edward. In um, Daniel 7, 9 through 14, Daniel speaks of the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man. And the Son of Man is clearly distinct from the Ancient of Days. For in verse 9, Daniel sees two thrones. The Ancient of Days sits on his throne, singular, but he sees two thrones. So they're clearly differentiated there. The Son of Man was given ruling authority, honor, and sovereignty by God the Father, or the Ancient of Days. And it says that all the people and nations and language should worship him. They should worship the Son of Man. Now, in Daniel's theology here, in Daniel's... Uh, vision here. Who is the son of man here that was given all dominion and was worshipped by all the people, na nations, and languages? Okay. Um, we take that to mean Messiah. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. As the Messiah, he will establish the kingdom of God and have rulership on the earth. Establishing the kingdom of God and establishing the oneness of God, not establishing the oneness or the kingdom or the godliness of himself. He is sent by God as the Messiah to establish that God as God, the one who created him. This is Messiah. When you go to the teachings in the Bible and uh, what the uh, Jewish teachings are and requirements for the, for the Messiah, they tell you that 
the Messiah will establish, number one, the oneness of God. Number two, he will call the people back to Israel, all the people back to Israel. Number three, the world will be in a state of world peace. Number four, there will be a, the temple will, rebuilt, will be rebuilt. Number four, he must come from, the, from David through Solomon, not through Nathan. That's another problem here. Because you see, when you talk about Messiah, but this is not a problem for the Muslim, uh, 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 Ed. This is a problem for the Christian himself. We establish Jesus Christ as the Messiah, and according to the Bible itself, the Jews, they don't establish because of those criteria are not met, but Jesus is in, in complete servitude to God and establishing the kingdom of God. As it says, David, David, uh, you shall be the shepherd, and you shall feed them, and David, you shall be the prince, but God being over all, and I shall be the God and Lord over you all. This is in the book of Deuteronomy, I believe, chapter 25, verse 29. So God makes it very clear who the boss is and who the worker is.